What's up everyone? Today we're going to go over word letter. First, we'll look at the input and the output. Then we'll look at the diagram to understand the approach. Now for the code, I'll be linking it down below in the description. And finally, we'll go over the complexities. The input is going to be two words and a list of words. So this is going to be our begin word and this is going to be our end word. And the output is going to be an integer. Our job is to go from this word and transform it till it finally ends up as that one using the words in the list. So what's a transformation? If we go from one word to another word by changing one character, so hit becomes hot because I changed to O. So let's look at how we get the answer five for this example. We go from hit to hot, hot becomes dot because the H becomes a D, dot becomes dog because T becomes a G, and dog becomes cog, which is our end word because D becomes a C. Now you observe something like words, which look like nodes, and this transformation, which looks like an edge. So we have ourselves a graph, and because we want the distance from the origin to the end, we're gonna go for a layer-focused BFS. If you guys didn't see my video about the difference between a layer-focused and connection-focused BFS, I'll link it down below. Feel free to take a look. So, how are neighbors actually generated? We know that a word and its neighbor are nodes, and the relationship between them is an edge. The way we generate neighbors is by going letter and letter in the given word. Let's say H-I-T is our word. So first is going to be H, and we swap it out for alphabets that we have. So A-I-T, B-I-T, C-I-T, D-I-T, all the way till Z-I-T. Now, if a neighbor exists in the word list, we are going to add it to the queue and add it to the visited set. Otherwise, if our neighbor is actually the begin word, we are going to skip it. So once we're done with H-I-T, we go to the I, right? So H-A-T, H-B-T, H-C-T, H-O-T. And we see that H-O-T is in the actual list. So we add it to the queue and we add it to the visit itself. Finally, we wrap it up with T, same way, H-I-A, H-I-B, all the way to H-I-Z. Now let's look at the actual big picture and go from start. Here's the overall diagram of our problem. Now that we understand how a neighbor is formed, let's begin with our first word, hit. So hit is going to generate its neighbors. First, we take the letter H and we swap it out for the 26 letters in the alphabet. So A-I-T, B-I-T, all the way to Z-I-T. And we swap it out, H-A-T, H-B-T, etc. Then we actually hit H-O-T because H-O-T is a letter in our list. Now we found one more thing and we can put it in the queue. Once again, we go from H and we generate its neighbors, AOT, BOT, COT, etc., etc. Next, we go DOT because that's a valid letter, sorry, valid word in our list and we can put it in the queue and it's going to be another layer in our word ladder. Similarly, we check it out for letter D, we swap out the different neighbors. For letter O, we swap out the neighbors. And for letter T, we swap out the neighbors until we hit DOG. Finally, we swap out the letters, so AOG, BOG, and COG, and we hit our N word. So our word ladder in this case is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The time complexity is going to be O of N because in the worst case, we might have to go through the entire given list. And the space complexity is going to be O of n times m squared because we can go through the entire list and store up to m squared potential neighbors. n is going to be the length of the list and m is going to be the length of the words. Okay, so that's how you solve word ladder. If you like the video, please thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to